All security, all security. Be advised, Andy Roddick's on the grounds. <laughs> yeah. All security, all security. Be advised, Andy Roddick's on the grounds. You know you're in America when you hear that. Right? <laughs> Security guard Mike Dubay is also getting excited by another imminent arrival. Former President Bush Sr. is going to be coming in here today, and we have a, he's going to be meeting the players. We have a party going on, and he'll be here just momentarily. With an ex-president on site, there's added pressure on ATP supervisor Mark Darby. It's fingers crossed for a dry day. Well, if we're lucky enough to get all three singles in, uh, scheduled, we'll, we'll be in... We'll be in good shape. The score is five four. Yeah. And uh, he's sir. No, he's five four. You're sir. Yeah. No. Okay. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. I'll show you. Five four. Oh. First set. Top serve still. Can you start in? Yeah, from five four. Yeah. Yeah. What time yeah. does that start? Uh, one o'clock. Oh. Yeah, Forty five minutes. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Very nice to meet you. Uh, well, we're playing tennis. I'm looking at the radar now, and it looks uh, clear for the next couple hours, so we should be able to get the Moya Hewitt match on court at 1 o'clock. As former President Bush makes his way to the court, Roger Federer is being honored for ending the season the world's highest ranked player, the Indesit ATP race champion. <laughs> Moya and Hewitt look on, both former number ones, waiting for the chance to finish their match. Very hard to believe what I have achieved. Thank you. With the formalities over, last night's rain-affected match can start on time. The action will be broadcast live on TV to millions of homes around the world. Every part of the player's form and technique will be analysed and discussed. Carlos Moya gets the better start. He wins the first set in a tie-break. This only fires up the young Australian, who storms back to take the second set. The temperature on court is rising. With some close line calls not going his way, the Spaniard succumbs to the pressure. It's the first win of the tournament for a relieved Leighton Hewitt. Leighton Hewitt! While George and Barbara Bush chat with Federer over a spot of lunch, in the treatment room, Guillermo Correa is receiving a massage to his right shoulder. It's a normal routine for any tennis player before a big match, but for the young Argentine, it has special significance. Correa has not hit a tennis ball in anger for over three months. He arrived in Texas desperate to play, but uncertain of what lies ahead. My confidence in the tennis part is not very high, obviously. I've been away for three or four months, but I have not played anything. But I do have a lot of will to play, and that adds up a lot. Physically, I feel good, and I'm ready for the fight. I know it's going to be very difficult that I can win the tournament or that I can win a match, but let's see what happens. I'll try to do the best possible. I think all this week is to enjoy this great tournament and go back and play tennis. It doesn't really worry me. The confidence is how I feel now. In just over two hours' time, months of careful rehabilitation will be put to the test in Korea's first match of the tournament against Russian Marit Safin. Against one of the biggest hitters in tennis, Guillermo Correa's shoulder is holding up but he's serving and returning without his usual speed or accuracy. Safin, on the other hand, is living up to his reputation as a potential Masters Cup champion. Even a quick call for some divine inspiration isn't enough. Ball after ball flies past the hapless courier in a one-sided contest. 
it's a seemingly easy victory for the Russian player who appears to be on a roll. In the press room, a rumour starts to circulate that Correa may decide to drop out of the tournament. Is there any chance that you might leave the tournament now? Zero possibility. How's it going? The final match of the day sees crowd favourite Andy Roddick play the British star Tim Henman. The Texan crowd have waited a long time to see their homegrown tennis star. They'll have to cheer loudly tonight against his opponent's noisy fans. So we're ready to go. Andy Roddick will start with serves. As the players settle in, there's little to separate them. Henman is the first to have break points, but squanders them both. Roddick breaks Henman in the seventh game and takes the first set. Roddick's searing forehands and backhands find the line on countless occasions. Henman replies with sublime volleys and a deftness of touch. In the end, the second set comes down to a tiebreak. Roddick wins the tiebreak. It's the bitter taste of defeat for Tim Henman. Missed it. He missed it. Andy Roddick prevails in two brilliant sets of ten. 7-5 and 7-6. Disappointing for him, and no doubt. It's, you know, it's never fun losing, but I still think with the uh, the way that I'm playing and the opportunities I've got, it's a round-robin event. Normally, you're, you're on your bike and you're going, to the next, you're going to the next tournament, but here you've got two more important matches, so looking forward to it. It was a great, unbelievable atmosphere last night. You know, it was, it was difficult with the weather. It's been... It's been unpredictable, but um, I know that if I play like that and 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 do that on a on a consistent basis, then you know I'm going to win because I'm I'm here for a reason. Yeah, I was just watching the local forecaster on the on the screen. He was saying there's a line of stuff to the west of us that he's expecting here by two o'clock. So I'm not sure whether we're really going to be uh, out of the woods or not. For Henman. Rain on the fourth day gives him not only time to contemplate last night's match, but to think about home. His wife, Lucy, is expecting their second child. Often they'll travel together, Lucy working as a director for the live tennis broadcast. But this week, Tim is on his own. You know, it's much more important that she's at home and, and staying healthy and relaxed and not having to worry about nervous matches like that. When the rain finally relents at 8.42 in the evening, Gaston Gaudio and Carlos Moya enter the stadium for their second match of the tournament. It's a must win for both players. Roger Federer's girlfriend, Mirka, has a chance to stretch her legs. The former professional tennis player is putting Iggy through his paces, while her boyfriend meets an excited group of Mercedes competition winners who've traveled to Houston to meet their hero. <laughs> Unlike so many other players, the world number one doesn't employ a coach. He travels from tournament to tournament with Mirka, who's on hand to arrange her boyfriend's schedule. Well, I'd book the hotels, flights, you know, just uh, order equipment for Roger, um, transportation, media. That's what I do usually, yeah. Federer's mother is also on hand to give extra support, but this is one match in which she won't be biting her nails. Carlos Moya returns to his locker room. He's beaten Gaston Gaudio and has kept his Masters Cup hopes alive. For the champion of Roland Garros, the dream is all but over. Well, it's a great feeling to win a match uh, and, you know, Maybe I don't even qualify for the semi-final, but I think it's a, an important win for me because, as I said, the uh, last match I won was two months ago, and now it uh, looks like I'm back again. Yeah, I'm playing some good tennis, so this victory means a lot to me. Moya knows that his next opponent will be Roger Federer, who at half past ten at night is making his way out onto court to play Leighton Hewitt. It promises to be a very long night.
despite a rain interruption midway through the match, Leighton Hewitt leaves the court at one in the morning. Not the first time this year he's been the victim of Federer brilliance. After the rain dramas of the night before, Texan sunshine greets the spectators on day five of the Masters Cup. On court, Guillermo Correa is having to dig deep to stay in touch with a rejuvenated Tim Henman. Meanwhile, Leighton Hewitt is back on the practice court. There's no time to rest after his loss to Roger Federer in the early hours of the morning. He must win his match against Gaston Gaudio tomorrow to have any chance of reaching the last four. For Guillermo Correa, there will be no place in the semi-finals. He's been beaten by Tim Henman, who can enjoy the rewards of winning his first match. I'll beat a bit of Cristal. Sunshine on the fifth day means that all the matches can start on time. It's the perfect setting to watch one of the most highly anticipated contests of the championships. It's Roddick against Safin. It's a battle between two of the biggest hitters in tennis. With every shot, showers of yellow fibre cloud the sky. The power is awesome, with both players living up to their hype. But it's Andy Roddick who gains the first advantage. He breaks in the sixth game. He holds his serve and takes the first set. In the second set, neither player is prepared to hold back. It's as tight as ever, and there's no let-up in the ferocity of shots. Even Correa, recovering from his loss earlier in the day, can admire the action from a commentary position in the stadium. The American takes the second set in a tiebreak. He's won the match, and if his form is anything to go by, he'll avoid Federer in the semi-finals. Safin's future in the tournament will hang on his result against Tim Henman tomorrow. Leighton Hewitt's Masters Cup is also in the balance, but his coach, Roger Rashid, seems confident. The little bloke's actually done pretty well this year. He's uh, he stepped up and uh, and uh, changed his game and developed his game and just moved along with the um, development of the modern game as well. And uh, you know, it's a good little group of guys going at the moment with Federer, Roddick, Safin, and, and Leighton Correa, uh, Moyer, and Agassi, and, and those type of guys. And uh, you know, it's exciting times for tennis. Roger Federer's taken it to a new level at the moment in the game, and and you know that's what drives you. That's what motivates you to try and uh, compete with the best players week in and week out. Hopefully I can get through to the semi-finals. I've got to play Gaston Gaudio tomorrow from Argentina. Um, not going to be an easy match at all. But if I can get through that one, I've got a very good chance of going through to the semis and uh, you know, probably playing someone like Andy Roddick in the semi-finals, which would, would be a buzz. And uh, you never know, maybe I'll get another crack at Roger in the final. So we'll just have to wait and see. I just get an ice cream. Just it's been a hot day here in Houston, first time all week. So um, yeah, I think Roger, after a tough training session, definitely deserves something. Yeah. Okay, we can give this one more shot. As Carlos Moya walks off court at 8:56 in the evening, he knows that his time in Houston is over. He's just taken Roger Federer to three sets. At times, it looked like he might go all the way. But in the end, he just couldn't quite beat the man that some say is unbeatable. Um, well, today, I, I thought it was, you know, it was tough mentally, you know, get, obviously to go into such